Hey, what's going on everybody? Rick and Nikki here, back for another round of Theme Park News. We'll start this week's video with a quote from NBC Universal CEO Jeff Schell. Epic is full steam ahead. We expect that park to open in 25 and certainly in time for summer of 2025. He is referring to, of course, Universal's Epic Universe. The new theme park is under construction in Orlando. Originally, it was going to be ready in 2023, so two years. This is what the pandemic cost us, but at least we have a time frame to point to now. The new park will be Universal's largest in the U.S. and will include lands and attractions based on DreamWorks, Illuminations, and Nintendo content. So like I said, at least now we have a time frame to point to. Mm -hmm. What do we have? Is that three summers? We have to go through the summer of 2022, 23, and 24. We got, we got to make it through three more summers. Wow, that's a lot of summers. <laughs> Let me think of it that way. Woo. Yeah, which is hard to take considering the original plan was to have it done by sometime in 2023. Okay, well, honestly, around 2025 was when I was wanting to retire, so it might be a, just a fantastic blowout year. <laughs> that means you can cover all of the original parks, Universal Studios Florida and Islands of Adventure, and I will cover Epic Universe. Hey, okay. SeaWorld Orlando's Seven Seas Food Festival returns February 4th with a concert series. The concert lineup will include Flo Rida, Everclear, and Vanilla Ice. The Seven Seas Food Festival will run Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays through May 8th. For more details about the festival, visit SeaWorld.com slash Orlando. You got it right this time. You sure did. I always want to say SeaWorldOrlando.com. You do. But it's not. But it's not. Don't get confused. Unhear that. <laughs> it is SeaWorld.com slash Orlando. Universal Orlando has brought back its two days for free ticket deal for Florida residents. Florida residents can get two days free with a purchase of a two-day ticket. Tickets must be purchased by March 31st and used by June 30th. There are no blockout dates with these tickets. Sticking with Universal, they recently opened their classic Monsters Tribute store. I did a video on it, a little rapid fire info on that store. I'll leave a link to that video. Go check it out. But I will say this before you go check out that video. Obviously, wait until the end of this video, but Universal Creative did an outstanding job again on this tribute store. So creative. Yeah, I'm excited to check it out in person. The video, I'm sure, captures just like a portion mm -hmm. of the entire, you know, like the feel of that store. Well, they, they that, captured so. all the uh, classic monsters. I was impressed, I think, most by the Wolfman. I enjoyed that little... Uh, display they had of him but it was unique because they also had displays for the invisible man mm -hmm. you don't see that much there universal well he's invisible <laughs> and a phantom of the opera right i thought that was pretty cool yeah, so here's something you should not let sneak up on you because it's kind of sneaking up on me the peppa pig theme park which is going to be located next to legoland florida is getting set to open next month yep february 24th mm -hmm. in fact don't let that sneak up on you it's coming and it's time now for your Mickey Minute. A Mickey Mouse Minute? A Mickey Mouse Minute. Awesome. I've been waiting for this. Okay. The Festival of Fantasy Parade returns to the Magic Kingdom on March 9th. The Magic Kingdom's updated Castle Stage Show will debut February 25th. A cavalcade is also coming to the park on February 11th and will feature Miguel from Coco. And that is your Mickey Minute. And now let's move on to you be trippin'. Time to talk about Rick's Road Trips. That is our second channel. It's the channel where we cover all the fun stuff to do and some good stuff to eat outside of the theme parks. I will leave a link to that channel, but if that type of stuff interests you, go check it out. This past week, we had a very special, I think, food tour. Florida food tour. Yeah, it's awesome. If you're familiar with the show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives, you want to check out that video because I've watched that show before and I've seen some great like dive food and diner food and stuff and I'm like, oh man, it'd be cool to go there. Well, they featured a restaurant that's here in Orlando, so 
we were able to go and we recorded it. We made a whole vlog on it. I will leave a link to that video. Go check it out. It's a good place to consider uh, for a place to eat outside of the theme parks because we do get questions quite often. Where's a good place to eat outside of the theme park? So mm -hmm. Rick's Road Trips, when we do Florida food tours, highlights those places. Once again, there is a video to that Seven Bites food tour in the description box. Before we get to the questions and answers segment of this video, I do have some new Flicksters I need to shout out. Mm -hmm. These are people who support the channel via Patreon or channel memberships. Um, I've missed a week or two, so I'm a little behind. My apologies. Uh, we have a list of names to read right now. Nikki has been so kind as to offer to read them. I didn't offer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do the easy ones if you want. Okay, so executive producers are GTA5 every day and Jess E. Hooper. Producers are Corey Kroetzer? Kroetzer. Corey Kroetzer. Corey Kroetzer. Um, vacay every day. Stephanie, the Adams family. That's pretty good. Da 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 da. Um, <laughs> da, -da, -da, -da. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um, supporters are Kevin B., Stacey Miller, Roderick Jacobs, and Frankie Wilhite. Awesome. Thank you guys for supporting the channel via channel memberships or Patreon. Thanks, guys. And now we have reached the questions and answers segment. You guys had some questions. We're going to attempt to answer them. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Question number one. Okay. First one is from Andrew Schwartz. Hi, Rick and Nikki. I love your content. I will be down in Florida in February and will be visiting Universal on the 21st. Will they be doing the package you can buy for Mardi Gras snacks again? I believe he's referring to the lanyards. Okay. Um, they are doing a Mardi Gras food card, yes. It's a little different this year. Mm -hmm. But they do have like a, a food card for Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. All right, next one is from Bethany. Uh, what is your Rick's Flicks guess on Poseidon's Fury? Any luck it will open next week? <sighs> Poseidon's Fury. Next week, I'm going to say no. That part of the... Uh, the question, I think I can answer a solid no. It won't open next week. When will it open? My best Rick's Flicks guess. Um, how about spring? How about spring break time? If they don't hit that, by summertime. Well, okay, so think of it this way. They have Mardi Gras coming next week, right? Mm -hmm. Next weekend Mardi Gras starts. Yeah. Um, so I would say, yeah, maybe mid-March halfway through that kind of Mardi Gras season because that's like their next biggest event. They oh, they just opened up that tribute store. So I think they kind of want to line it up, mm -hmm. you know, for promotional and things like that to give each like their set time in the yeah. sun. Does yeah. that make sense? They're, they're glory. So, yeah. yeah. So I think that may, it might be a little bit longer. Not next week. I don't know. No. That's my best guess. I don't live. I think it'd be like a, a few weeks down. Yeah. At least. I think at the earliest would be spring break season. Mm -hmm. Now, the facade's looking pretty good. Um, well, you know what? The best thing to do is I do update videos every week on Islands of Adventure and... Uh, Studios. Yeah, Studios Florida. Mm -hmm. Just keep watching those. When they start moving the construction walls back or down, you know, that'd be a bigger clue is that they're getting really close. Right now, the construction walls are still up, so... Right. Once some come down, we'll know we're that much closer. And I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Next one is from Lily. Have you seen the full menu list for Mardi Gras? Um, I can't seem to find it anywhere on their website. I looked as well. I have not seen a full menu. Now, I think they did tweet out or maybe on IG mm -hmm. highlight some of the food. Mm -hmm. But a full menu, no. Haven't seen that yet. Uh, when I come across it, I will mention it again in one of those weekly update videos or here in the weekly roundup. But I couldn't find a full menu either. All right, number four is from Katie. Dear Rick, do you think opening day for Mardi Gras will be a busy day? Yes, I do. Uh, just because that's the first day of an event. Now, Mardi Gras really doesn't get swinging until the late afternoon. So the daytime, I think, could still be quieter, mm -hmm. but a slight uptick even in the daytime hours. But once we get into the late afternoon, especially that day one, mm -hmm. day one of anything is always, you know, a little busier. So is that Saturday, February 4th? Yes. Are th is there a... Oh, no, the 5th. The Saturday the 5th? The 5th. Okay. I believe, yes, the 5th. Okay. So, 
Yeah, I mean, it's a Saturday anyway, so it's probably going to be busy. Um, are they having a concert that opening night? I don't know. Because usually concert nights are even busier. I would think, like during, you know. You caught me off guard. I don't know. During the day. Uh, I'll, put, I'll put it up on the screen here if there's a concert or not. Okay. I didn't study up for this. Because this kind of makes a difference, too. It does. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that the daytime. Yeah, the full daytime, I would say, a slight, mostly. A slight uptick mm -hmm. just because more people are in town for that event. Yeah. But really, the late afternoon and the evening, it's really that first night's going to be hopping. All right, last one, number five, is from Cindy. Hey, Rick and Nikki, I wanted to let you know that I love all your videos, and I've been watching you guys for almost four years and still love every wow. video. Thank Thanks. you. We appreciate that, Cindy. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Um, now for my question. Do you know how late the water taxis run and how early they open? Do they run for early park admission and have a point when they stop running for the evening? Okay. Um, I think the timing is... They start running 30 minutes before early park admission. Okay. Now, sometimes early park admission could be 8 a.m., mm -hmm. so they would start running at 7.30. I've seen early park admission as early as 7 a.m. Uh, 7 a.m. before. Mm -hmm. In that case, they would run at 6.30 a.m. And as far as closing, I'm going to phrase it this way. They will run about 30 minutes after closing. So, for example... I'm talking City Walk. Mm -hmm. If City Walk closes at 2 a.m., they should run at least uh, till 2.30. Now, the hours of City Walk, not quite as standard as they used to be. Okay. They, City Walk used to be open like to 2 a.m. all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, I don't know if they're staying open as late or maybe they are just because of uh, the pandemic closing things down and reopening and stuff like that. So I'm going to phrase it this way. 30 minutes past the closing of City Walk, the water taxi should be running. Okay. All right. And that will do it for questions and answers. And that will do it for the weekly roundup this week. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for, for watching. joining. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, thanks for watching, guys. We appreciate it. And, and as always, don't miss the magic, don't miss the fun. Thanks for watching Rick's Flicks. And now, click that subscribe button.